What's up LEGO Builders? Welcome back to Coconut Brick Studios for another week of building Coruscant and LEGO. I'm treating this update like it's the final one before the finale comes out in order to get myself into a building frenzy and just get as much work as I possibly can done. I have have kind of like a, I've fallen into a little bit of a habit where I just work until I feel like I have enough footage to make an update and then I stop and you know put the update out. And, and that's a good thing while I'm in the middle of a series and just, you know, grinding through the updates and trying to keep steady progress going. But I have a deadline now. I got to get this thing done. So I'm hoping if I just put myself in fourth quarter mode this week, I'll get the bulk of the stuff that's just been hanging around done. And then that will leave one more update to just clean up and get the rest of the mock finished. So I'm going to be working everywhere and fans of battle damage are going to love what I'm cooking up for a couple of the skyscrapers. All that being said, don't forget to execute order 66 on that like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the finale, which will be coming out soon. But all that being said, it's time to get building. I'm jumping right into the thick of things this week and tiling off the sloped section of the Senate building. I've had a lot of people asking what I was going to do here, and I had thought of adding more windows or some kind of design into these curved parts to, you know, match the front side. But I think a simple layer of tile is all that is needed. I tiled off the first side while it was connected to the building, and that was such a pain in the neck. Luckily, the other side needed to be removed and redone anyway, so tiling off that will be much easier. I'm copying the design I came up with last week and adding a rectangle panel in between each of the panels with wedge plates on one side. Then slapping a layer of tile on and returning them to their place on the Senate building. Which proved to be much easier said than done because for some reason the panels on this side just won't cooperate and are doing everything in their power to make me want to rage. And as if that wasn't enough, the shirt sleeve of my sweatshirt has ripped off this curved section twice now. It's time to finish the final battle damage crater. These sections turned out to be more of a mental battle than a building challenge. I would put off building them and fret about how perfect they needed to be and overcomplicate what did I needed to do and what the building process would look like. Then when I'd finally start, I would blow through them super fast because honestly, they're not very complicated. You just build a hole in the shape you want, tile off the bottom, then line the rim with slopes and add random slopes, tiles, and plate as rubble and boom, you have a crater. After that, I have a few random things to wrap up the usual, tiling walls and rebuilding and replacing spots and parts I stole and broke apart for other videos. Classic coconut. Let's talk pillars for a bit. I decided the other day that these needed a little extra detail, just a little extra spice to them. They're very simple in nature, much like the classic Doric columns seen throughout history, and I wanted something a bit more like the Ionic columns, which are still pretty simple, but have the little rolls or detailing at the top, which for me comes in the form of slopes. And I figured if I'm gonna add slopes to the top of the pillar, I might as well add them to the bottom too. So that's what I'm doing here, just a pretty simple adjustment to pop up the pillars, place down the slopes, and boom, you're done. Wrong. It was a lot more complicated than that, but I'm not going to bore you with the details this time around. Oh, ho, ho, we are getting so close to the end here. Um, I know this one's probably going to be the final update, but it may not look like it looking at the mock right now. But trust me, we're going to get a lot done. And once that roof is on, this thing is going to look finished. What have I been working on? I got some more work done on the road. I've got the ATTE in here right now, and I did that so I knew where to put the headlight bricks because obviously, you know, I didn't want to have any under there or underneath like where the ATTE was going to be sitting because then it would just be a waste. Unfortunately, there's one that ended up underneath this foot right there, but that's okay. And then I've got some more over there on that side. I am out of brick, so this was as far as, it, as I was able to go, but I am really close to the end. Then there's this crater right here. Man, I am just loving how this one turned out. I think this one's my favorite one out of all the craters I built, which kind of makes sense because, you know, this was the final one I've done. So I've had the experience and knowledge that has built up from all these others and kind of culminated in this last nearly perfect crater. It's kind of funny that this one turned out to be one of the best and my favorite because, you know, a lot of the others have like an actual story surrounding them, whether it's a gunship crash site, Fordo's stand, Vulture Droid, and then you know just random hole in the road but i just like the shape the way all the rubble fit together was really nice i stuck some plate underneath some of these pieces so you can actually see they sit at an angle sloping down in from the top of the road to the bottom of the crater which makes this just look so good oh the senate building have i been having fun with this over the weekend um let's start over here you guys saw i tiled off these panels it just looks so good it looks so much more complete so finished 
this bottom lines up pretty well and even the fact of having another layer of tile just kind of almost hides or buries this i don't i don't even know how to verbalize what tiling off this did really other than it just it makes it look better i think one of the biggest differences is originally it was just you know a curved thin skeleton of plates but once i stuck this extra layer of tile on it made each of these panels so much thicker and more robust and they all just fit together better unfortunately though this side is giving me some serious problems you can see there's a big gap right there it's a gap right there. The bottoms of these panels just do not line up very well. I don't know what's going on over here because you guys saw the other side. Like, I'm not crazy. It's possible to have everything fit together, line up smoothly. There's just something about this side that is killing me. You know, when you look at the Senate building, this is the more prominent and visible side. So I'm pretty frustrated about that because the better side is tucked away in the corner. But I'm just going to keep hammering away at this, trying to figure out what I can do to make these panels fit together smoother. But that's not the only thing I did. I made some pretty big adjustments to the window as well. Originally, you'll remember I had those strips of tile running horizontally across the window, and then I had that light bluish gray frame. I just didn't like the way the light bluish gray clashed with the rest of the colors. And then I also made another big change. As you guys will remember, these were light bluish gray at one point, and I switched them to dark bluish gray, and that still didn't look good because it made the window look very blocky because you can see these tiles were stopping right here and so it made the window kind of jump down and look like it had a bunch of steps like that which I felt like just looked kind of Minecraft-esque too blocky to be realistic and so I decided to just make the wedge plates the same color as well and add those in as part of the window so now the actual window has a much more smooth and fluid shape to it and the last thing I want to talk about are the pillars they look so much better with those slopes on the bottom I just love how just a couple of slopes can add so much to any kind of structure or build and then I'm going to be mirroring these slopes at the tops of the pillars next that's kind of the next thing I'm going to be working on so I've actually got the slope built already I'm just gonna sit in there like that it's gonna look like that I got the slopes in right there what I need to do next is figure out where exactly these slopes are gonna sit because I want them to sit just under the uh, the wall kind of like that because this roof is gonna come out across the top and rest on top of this and then I'm going to build a little thin frame of plate that's actually going to connect all of these pillars together. I don't want to get in too much too deep into this or explain too much of this because it's just so much easier and better to do it while I'm actually building it or after it's built so you, yeah, I can visualize what I'm telling you guys. But basically we're just going to have a thin frame of plate that's going to run across all of these pillars on top of these sloped sections and then the roof is going to run out and sit on those. Speaking of the roof, I really wanted to get working on it but unfortunately those parts are still on the way. This BrickLink order is taking forever to get to me I don't know what is going on but hopefully it gets here soon but there is always other stuff to work on like the bank a few months ago I put out a video where I turned the Lego ideas globe into a separatist core ship I had a blast making the video but I had a ton of unused dark blue plates left over when I was done and at the time I was a little annoyed because that's extra pieces I have to store and for what purpose well now their purpose is clear they will finish plating off the mini roof that will become part of the foundation for the ruined skyscraper truly a worthy purpose the foundation of the skyscraper will be the same as the first one I built on the apartment complex. It's the same for a couple of reasons. First, it will be much quicker and easier to build a pre-existing design, and second, it will help the mock keep a consistent look throughout the entire build. It's a pretty simple and easy frame to build, with the corners being brick built and all the sides are just large panels. The reason I'm making the actual skyscraper that sits on top of this just the bottom portion is because I want it to look like the rest of the building was ripped away or blown off because, you know, Time. I just wasn't looking forward to building an entire skyscraper this close to the finale. Not too long ago, someone pointed out that having a tall building this close to the Senate building might block your view of it from certain angles. And the last thing I want to do is deprive the world a good view of this Senate building. So I had the idea to just build the bottom portion, thus fulfilling both my desires to not have to build a full skyscraper, but still have some kind of structure atop the bank. I have one last bit of greeble work to do on the bank, which is run this set of pipes up the bank wall and into the mini roof. Why I have exposed pipes running up the side of a bank? 
because it looks cool. And at the end of the day, this is why I love mock building, being able to build things that look cool, especially little things. I often find it's the little things in that really bring a mock together, not just one cool massive technique or design. It's almost like there's a life principle hidden in there somewhere. I need to get the pillars finished this week so I can start the roof, which means building these up to the right height so the top of the slopes sit just under the top of the wall. All right, let's talk battle damage. So I got this skyscraper all finished and put in. I really like how this battle damage section looks. You look at it and immediately think, oh yeah, this thing's broken. The next thing I need to do for it is add in a row of black brick on the inside here covering up this interior and then i'm going to stick some flame pieces on that so it looks like you know this thing is on fire and hopefully that'll be everything i need to do for the skyscraper outside of that all i need to do to finish the bank is tile off this exposed section of studs make some adjustments with these lights and i should be all good to go i'm really excited this was like one of the last big things that needed to be done so i'm glad we're at the finish line for the bank another thing i did was take this Technic support beam and move it one stud that direction. And then I added in a row of dark bluish gray one by brick. I did that because I didn't like all those exposed holes that were on the sides of the Technic beams. I just feel like this looks much more complete and just much better overall. Let me tell you, one of the plus sides of nearing the end of the mock and doing repeat builds is you basically have a blueprint or a set of instructions you can look back on. So it was really nice to be able to keep going back over here and look at what I did with that skyscraper and skyscraper base. It made this whole build process go by much quicker and much smoother. And speaking of battle damage, check this out. I finally mustered up the courage and attacked this large skyscraper and turned it into the destroyed remains of a large skyscraper. So for anybody who didn't watch last week's update, the story is that gunship right there was hit and comes flying through right here shears off at the side of the skyscraper and then you know goes down over there and crashes into the bank and because the gunship goes in right here basically causes the rest of the skyscraper to tip over and fall over here just outside of the mock although i am thinking about having a small section of this entertainment complex be smashed and destroyed to kind of represent how close that skyscraper came to falling into the actual entertainment complex building this battle damage top of the skyscraper really hammered in the message that i've kept saying over and over in this mock update and that is these battle damage sections are more of a head game than an actual building challenge i would always hype these up and put them off because i was like oh it's so complicated to make something look like it's been really realistically destroyed or broken by something or blown up you know what I mean but as I was building this I realized it's really just following a series of simple steps that when combined together create that complex desired realistic result and the steps for this were pretty simple so I created the general shape or outline of the top of this panel using wedge plates and regular plate and then behind those I added some of these one by plates to just represent you know small sections of the panels or buildings sticking up into the air and then to cap it all off I added some of these wedge tiles and regular tiles in following the same outline or shape that I created with the first wedge plates and then all of those things combined created that finished cool result. As far as the rest of the building process goes it's going to be very similar to what I'm going to be doing over there. I'm going to place a bunch of black brick or plate or something in here to kind of cover up this ugly filler brick inside and then I'll have a bunch of fire pieces sticking out on top representing you know flames and the burning building. I also had a couple of people suggest since the gunship is the one that comes crashing through this building having a few pieces of the gunship lodged in the skyscraper which I thought was a really cool idea so I'll be doing that as well. All right moving on to the senate building I got more of this giant window in place I got a huge order of black tile in today and I used probably like 98% of that order I almost got the whole thing tiled off. There's just this little chunk in the middle. Looking at this more complete window, I'm really happy that I decided to remove those strips of light bluish gray tile that we're gonna run through it as well as swapping in the dark bluish gray wedge plates. I just feel like it helps tone down the busyness of the window and it now matches the rest of the simplistic nature of the rest of the senate building i just felt like originally there was just too much going on up here especially compared to the rest of the senate building and moving on to the last thing i worked on i was able to connect some of the pillars unfortunately i ran out of those rounded uh 
light bluish gray wedge plates that I've been using to connect the pillars. So once I get those in, I can connect these and then I can start working on the roof, bringing it out and sitting it on top of these pillars. Over here is gonna be a little bit more complicated because this pillar right here, you can see is not in line with these front two pillars. So I'm gonna to need to figure out a way to make this support beam of brick kind of curve back to be able to connect to the here. I'm gonna do something similar to what I did with this curved section of the wall and use a bunch of these rounded one by two tiles and have them placed at intervals right here, thus allowing me to kind of, you know, curve this section right here back to this pillar. I'm still not sure what's gonna be going on over here, but once I start the roof and you know, get this part built, I can work my way over here and kind of figure out what's going on. You know, at a certain point, you just gotta start building. This update was kind of a mess. I did a lot more work than I normally do between time lapses and just more building in general. So it felt like every time I did a progress update, I was overwhelmed and forgot my talking points or overcompensated and over explained something. This has been one of the most challenging series I've done to date from a video making standpoint. I've really tried to improve my filming, editing, and narrative skills over the course of this series. So I've been putting together increasingly complicated videos that require more energy. That coupled with the complex challenge of the Senate building and just finishing this massive mock have made for some really stressful and rough weeks of late. But I made a ton of headway this week and I can confidently say next week will be the final update before the finale. But that's it for this week. Don't forget to let me know what you thought about everything down below in the comments and I will catch you next time. But until then, happy building.